feel like HBCUs is more of a more of a family thing based off your history, not just the family thing of who you know. It's something you'll hear a lot at Wilberforce University, the country's oldest private HBCU that's owned and operated by African Americans. As President Alfred Anthony Pinkard puts it, when this place was founded, even the idea of it was, well, that was social disruption. That was audacious. In 1856, people of African descent were still enslaved in the American South. And yet there were a group of people of goodwill, both black people and white people, it's important to note, who imagined a great university occurring in this area and went about to establish that. Powerful names have walked these halls, including Violet T. Lewis, who founded Michigan's first and only HBCU in Detroit. It's reopening this spring. But for years, for Michiganders seeking a traditional HBCU experience, Wilberforce or nearby Central State were their closest options. Of this fall's nearly 600 students, 116 are from Michigan. 57 are from the city of Detroit, like a member of Wilberforce's royal court, Raquel Gibson. So, Raquel, you are Miss Sophomore. Yes. That's a pretty big title. She was drawn to Wilberforce in high school by current students who shared their experience on social media. Ever since I got here, they literally become my family. So you knew right away an HBCU was something yes. that was important to you. Why? Walk me through that. The history of them. Um, I feel like right now with everything going on in the world, especially like with the Black Lives Matters movement, it was like, it was a major deal for me to go somewhere where my blackness is celebrated constantly. Extracurriculars like the Royal Court are a huge part of the HBCU experience. You can't miss the nod to the Divine Nine, painted on the trees outside the cafeteria. These colors represent historically African-American fraternities and sororities. But as student body vice president Alexander Murphy, also from Detroit, points out, what happens inside the classroom also sets HBCUs apart. Being able to communicate and connect and learn from someone who looks who look like you is completely unmatched because it's a lot deeper than paper, you know, than academics. It's a lot deeper than that. Sadly, this month, more than a dozen HBCUs around the country have received bomb threats. Honestly, not really surprised that it's still going on. Neither is Dr. Picard. How do you approach that as a school president? Well, you have to be very honest. It is, it's, it's, it is the world in which they live. I said to our students, uh, I want you to, first of all, continue to be vigilant. Uh, if you see something, say something. But I also reminded them that as a people, we have always been under siege. It, this has been part of our collective experience here in America. And I've also reminded them that we have always overcome. Next week, we dive into funding disparities for HBCUs, what experts say are ongoing challenges, plus what they say are new signs of hope for what's to come. In Wilberforce, Ohio, I'm Jen Schantz for 7 Action News. All right, a great look at a great institution. Thank you, Jen.